stage, he works in ICT, uh, he might or might not own this venue, John Whelan! <laughs> Keep clapping till he gets here. Thank you, thank you. Hello everybody, how's it going? I'm an upcoming comedian from Limerick City. And as you all know, I'm really from Limerick City and I really speak like this, but I, like all upcoming comedians if from Limerick, like your man in the rubber band that's Bodie Mac Boatface, or whatever his name is, <laughs> you have to hide yourself because I'm going to become so famous now that you, I won't be able to walk down the street. So I'm hiding behind this mask. But it's not like his plastic bag, his cheap plastic bag mask. No, no. This is a mask that is augmented reality. It is genuine augmented reality. So I have a program running in this, because I work in ICT, and I can make you look to appear to laugh at me, even though you may not be laughing. You see? That's working already. It's very good. It's working. But uh, no, that's not really the way I talk. <laughs> Body McBoatface. Now, as you can see, I am not one of the a real comedians, so this is a controlled experiment. So I'm the placebo, the one that doesn't work. <laughs> Think about it, you know, placebo. You know. <laughs> Trial, you know. <laughs> but like, Gee, you all look very young, as you can see. Maybe not you guys. <laughs> but I, I've got a whole load of millennial jokes now. They're not going to work. <laughs> but um, no, you look very young. Like I'd say, like, uh, f can I ask? If, I don't mind asking. Asking, what year were you born? Eighty-three. Pardon? Eighty-three. Eighty-three. Jesus. I have a T-shirt that I still wear that I bought in New York on a J1 visa in 1983. I'll tell you, it looks. It's washed a few times, but it looks well. You know. uh, any couples in? Any couples in? <laughs> so, anybody here from Tel Aviv? <laughs> Tel Aviv rocks, I'm telling you. Uh, now, well, couples, I'll tell you a story. This is a true story, because you've got to be careful. If you were a couple here, I came here, and this is true, even though name, my name is Whelan, I came here on my first date upstairs, sat there with my present wife. So just be careful what could happen here. And she's here tonight, so fair juice for, for putting up with me. Uh, so yeah, the thing about being, getting old is you have, you know, you got this is a scary thing for the, blo the boys, the lads, men, whatever you're supposed to call them in this gender neutral world. If, when you go to the barbers, this will happen to you. It doesn't happen in your 30s, early 40s, you'll be getting your hair cut probably by a woman and she will just hover around your eyebrows and she'll say, Sir, would you, would you need your eyebrows trimmed? <laughs> and it's a big shock. You go, what? What? And then next time you go, it happens every time you get used to it. She's going to ask. She's going to ask. So you just preempt and say, please do my eyebrows. <laughs> then five years, five years later, hit your 50s. The next step is they go for your ears. Do you, do, sir, would you like your ears, your, your, the hair from your ears removed? Yes, thank you. So. Anyway, look, thanks for coming in this very, very tough weather conditions. Isn't it ridiculous the way we call all these uh, storms and we name them after people? Jeez, it used to be just a storm. Now it's whatever Emma, storm Emma is coming. You could, it's getting ridiculous. Now we'll have, next thing it'll be Raindrop Michael. I was coming in, I got hit on the face by Raindrop Michael. <laughs> Are all the snowflakes, like, all the snowflakes could have a name, and we could name them after all the millennials. Yeah. <laughs> or name them after all the Guardian journalists. <laughs> See, I am a bit old in the politics side. Okay, look, the serious point, why I'm here, well, it's not serious, I hope it's not serious. The reason we're here, I'm here to talk about, I work in Trinity College with commercialization of research. So if you're a researcher, I'm the big bad person that you have to talk to when it comes to commercializing your research, if that's part of your grant. So I'm, you know, you've heard that, we heard the, the N-word already, already. N-word in, in university is bad, but the MC talked about nanoelectronics as the N-word. Well, I talk about the C-word, and the C-word is capitalism. <laughs> that's what I'm about. I am the, the guy, our office is the people that most 
bring the bad, bad world of commercialization into your research if it's relevant. And so my title I was thinking is talking about how to make a gazillion dollars from your research. So what's a gazillion? It's a huge number. You can potentially make a lot of money from your research. You, are, you have a great opportunity. And uh, there are lots of researchers that I've worked with that have made lots of money. I have, I have, we have you know, written checks, seven-figure checks for researchers in Trinity over the years. So, you know, it's a real thing. Um, so a, a gazillion, I'd say, is like 10 to the power of, say, 10 to the power of Google, <laughs> which is a large, so I've just, I've just lost all the accountants or business students there with to the power of. That's a, that's a kind of a mathematical thing, but but a unicorn. There is a new unit in in uh, startups or spinouts of. The, you've heard of the unicorn, which is a billion a billion dollars. There are 287 companies valued at a billion dollars now, but now it's getting so crazy. There's a you, you may have heard of a decacorn. So there's a decacorn, which is 10 billion dollars. And what's the next one? What's 100 billion dollars? No, no, that's not right. Who said that? That's stupid. <laughs> no, it's actually called a dragon. Seriously, they just changed the rules. Maybe because they come out of China, mostly the 100, but that's, that's a real thing. So I'm just going to give you, working seriously with spin-outs and working with researchers who start working on a brilliant project and suddenly it gets commercial interest. They don't, you know, it could be fundamental research. Sometimes it's applied research, but I've worked with them over the years, and there's a few little things that I've learned about, perhaps, for what it's worth, what could be a top tip, not a Viz top tip, but a real top tip for somebody knows Viz, good. <laughs> somebody from my generation. It's still a thing, Viz still exists, it's still very good. Check it out, Viz. <laughs> well, Steve Collins from Trinity, who sold a company called Havoc for 100 million to Intel, uh, he now has a company called Swerve. He's now a VC, Viet Cong, as we call them. Um, but he, he said the probability of success in a startup, and he's a computer scientist, the pro probability of success is proportional to, again, business people, hang with me now, proportional to. That's kind of a symbol like that. Proportional to technology to the power of one. So technology and your IP is important, but it's technology to the power of one plus Team to the power of two. Team is very important. And even more important, traction, if you have any traction with customers. So that's important. So team, we do a lot of work with trying to build teams. So there's, you know, the Myers-Briggs analysis of the four different quadrants. Who's into, who prefers, I'll put it, who's a Star Trek fan? Anybody? <laughs> Nobody. Two in front, yay. Right answer. Who's Star Wars fans? No, no, wrong. No, Star Trek is the real, like Star Wars, like wars. Who wants to watch wars? Star Trek is to boldly go, split infinitive, you know the way, yeah. If you're a pitch, yeah, that's, it. we're going to talk about the Oxford comma, I can know about that stuff. But uh, the split infinitive, I ignore that, but to boldly go where no man has gone before, like Theresa May's bedroom. <laughs> Ooh, I got into trouble with that with Anya because it was offensive towards women politicians. But I think Theresa May we can make an exception. <laughs> anyway. But the other thing that's really good, really important, here's a key. If you get one takeaway from this that I'd like to really think is valuable for I mean I did a PhD myself, I've had startups myself, but a key thing that a startup needs is to accept and it is tolerance of ambiguity. And in science research, that's a hard thing, unless you're doing social science or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> unless you're doing uh, uh, lots of other things, every science. <laughs> but, unless, but tolerance of ambiguity is really, you can't predict the future. You're trying to predict what's going to happen. So. Um, the, the, most, uh, the, most, the best accelerator for startups in the world would widely be uh, regarded as being Y Combinator, uh, based in San Francisco. Airbnb went through there, a lot of really 
a lot of unicorns, a lot of decacorns have come out of there. Um, but they said, that the founder of that, he said, if you launch a product in the market and you are happy when you launch it, yet you're 100% 100 happy with it, you've launched too late. And that's a really important philosophy for startup, that it perfection, the strive, like research teaches you to find, to prove everything, to validate everything. And sometimes you just have to take a punt. So, uh, you know, that's really, look at Elon Musk. He's launching rockets into space, as we know, SpaceX. God, every kid was watching it. All the millennials were watching it there the other night. I swear they never saw it. I remember the real rockets in space with people in them. You know, not just some guy playing a, a bad, uh, well, it's not a bad song. Sorry, I didn't say David Bowie's bad. David Bowie's God. <laughs> we love David. We love you, David. But, you know, the tolerance, and it did fail. You know, he, he's, he's had a lot of failures. I mean, the, you know, the, even the big one with the, with the car, that f the, uh, the main module, the camera conveniently broke at the, or uh, the transmissions didn't work at the end. So that's a, that's a uh, key thing. So I'm going to prove about tolerating failure. I know Enya is going to be killing me because I'm way over time, I guess. But this is, so when you're doing a demo and a pitch, <laughs> or even as a science demo, it's really risky to do a demo, but I'm going to take a risk now. So this demo may not work. If it doesn't work, well, I don't care, but I'm going to... <laughs> I wouldn't want to... That's the whole point. You can't care, you know? <laughs> can't care too much. Care a little bit. Uh, so let me try this. So, so as you remember me... Okay, Google. Remember me is a 2010 movie directed by oh. Alan Carter, <laughs> starring Robert Pattinson, Emily DeRoven, and Meghan Markle. Okay, that shows it's working. Shut up. Sorry. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Okay, indeed. Let's do this. How can I help? Who is John Whelan? According to Wikipedia, John Whelan is an Irish comedian. Jerry Seinfeld has said he is the most important comedian since Lenny Bruce. He won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 2007. That's it. Thank you.